What's going on guys? Joe Podge here. Today I am going to be doing a different type of video on my channel. I'm going to be reviewing Star Wars The Last Jedi. This is a review that I've wanted to do for quite some time and finally I've gotten a great mic to do a review with and don't have to use my laptop mic or my camera so I'm going to be using audio for a while on my channel. So today I wanted to talk about The Last Jedi and what I thought about it. Um, so I went to see it actually a day early. Uh, before it came out, technically, and then obviously we got out at like 1 o'clock in the morning, so it was the day when we got out, it was the day it was supposed to be released, so we saw it hours early, but yeah, technically a day early. Um, there are just some things I wanted to cover and talk about, uh, about the movie and characters and Luke especially and whatnot and other things, just everything about the movie. So when I came out of it, the movie, I'm going to say I didn't, like it as much as I do now <clears throat> and I think the main reason is because I've watched it a couple times not the full movie but snip snip pieces of the movie on my PlayStation 4 because I bought The Last Jedi and I'm gonna say it is a great movie it, it really is this isn't like a troll 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 video or whatever I, I don't care I, I thought it was a good movie um, most people didn't, though. A lot of people thought The Last Jedi was really a step back, and especially, for, really for Luke. Everyone was complaining about Luke not being a hero and being a hermit, and I'm, gonna, I'm here to say, well, he was a hermit and reclused himself because one of his students, Kylo Ren, formerly known as Ben Solo, turned against him and burnt down his temple, so... I mean, anyone that's going to see that and get their students taken away by another student and just have your whole training facility, everything you've worked so hard for, burnt to the ground, literally, and you have nothing all of a sudden, who wouldn't go into hiding? Who wouldn't run away and just want to be left alone and just want the Jedi Order to die? And he wanted it to because everything was failing. It always failed. You know, Vader, with Vader, that he almost pulled, he was almost pulled to the dark side there and then you have Kylo Ren who takes a handful of Luke's students and runs off with them and burns his temple to the ground and he just gives up and it's real I like realism in movies um, but yet again everyone's different so if I was in that situation who knows how I'd react if someone else was in that situation how would they react you know it's just it's different for everyone um, so I, I, did, I didn't really have problems with Luke being a hermit and being all grumpy and down and depressed and wanting the Jedi Order to die, I didn't have a problem with it. Um, mainly because, I, I mean, I've seen the the original Star Wars, you know, the 70s and 80s Star Wars, but I didn't watch it enough, I guess, to really like, understand Luke so much. So it really was never a problem. And I mean, again, it's, it's a movie, so... <laughs> so, oh my gosh, another another thing I wanted to cover was... Ray being a Mary Sue. Everyone calls her a Mary Sue, and, I mean, there are parts I can see yes, and there are parts I can see no. Um, during the Praetorian fight, she swings like, she, she's a very reckless, and is almost like a gray side Jedi, almost like in between dark and light. She's very aggressive, and messy, and sloppy, and just attacks in really, really messy, um, uncoordinated ways, and the Praetorian Guards do get a few hits on her, kicking her down, slicing her arm. Um, now, what's funny in the novelization, I know a lot of people will roll their eyes at this because it was a terrible excuse, they say, and it is kind of a weird excuse, was when uh, Kylo and Rey touched hands, They, she sort of received some of Kylo's training was what the novelization said, which I'm not going to say that's canon because it's, that's just a silly thing. I mean, yeah, in a way, yeah, Rey was kind of a... not full-on Mary Sue, but she definitely... Shouldn't have been able to handle her own against those Praetorian guards, but yet again, she was a scavenger on Jakku for her entire life, and, you know, went went scavenging and had to defend herself on this planet, had to live alone, had to learn to live alone without parents, how to fight with her staff, probably trained herself with her staff, and I'm sure the novelizations of that give a backstory on, you know, how she was on Jakku and how she trained, so, I mean, that helped a bit, but... She definitely shouldn't have been able to take on the Praetorian Guards, but hey, I mean, it's Star Wars. There are flaws in the prequels, there are flaws, there are flaws in the sequels, flaws in the old one, 
flaws in every movie. No movie is perfect. And I didn't care if she was a Mary Sue or whatever because it's, again, it's just a movie. I have better things to do than worry about, you know, a laser sword science fiction movie. But I can see why some people say she's a Mary Sue, but, you know, at the same time, I don't really care. And I think it was cool. And she did get hurt a few times. Um, learning the Force, I mean, she, the, her description of her character says she's Force sensitive, so you got to imagine living alone and stuff. There's The Force was probably there guiding her just a tad, or especially when she touched the saber in The Force Awakens. That kind of shocked her a bit. and Because um, you got to think of the lightsaber sometimes as like a Force-living being sometimes. Like, it's connected to past users, so when you use it, all that power and just everything held within that saber <laughs> like it literally goes through you, and it makes sense as to why she had those visions and the hallucinations and how uh, Maz Kanata kind of um, guided her and told her about the saber, and so that was nice. Now, on to another little topic, Poe. Poe Dameron. Everyone seems to love Poe. I don't really care for him that much. I mean, he's cool, but all he does is fly an X-Wing around and blow stuff up, and I mean, we've seen it a million times before in every single Star Wars movie, especially the old Star Wars movie, him flying around blowing stuff up. He's cool. I mean, he's just not my favorite. I don't really like him a whole lot. He's okay. But Poe is definitely just kind of one of those side characters. He's really whiny in The Last Jedi. He's, and I mean, I, mean, I get why. Um, whatever that purple haired lady's name was. Um, Holdo. Yeah, Holdo. Uh, he was just griping because he's like, you know, tell us we have hope and tell us what's going on. You're not telling us anything. You're not telling us why we're just straying away from the First Order and not fighting back and why we can't have an attack or an assault run on the Dreadnought or what Snoke's ship. Tell us why we need a plan. He's just, I don't know, but it's real. Again, I love realism, and he's really wanting to know because he doesn't want to die. You know, when you get in situations like that, it's just you think and and you just act and you just speak and mumble and you, you do anything, things that you normally wouldn't say, you say if you're worried about your life, you know, things like that. Um... The effects in The Last Jedi, they were great. I mean, they really were. Every Star Wars film has great effects. Every single one has great effects. Uh, I, I love what they did with the lightsabers, particularly, is um, outside a shot where Rey's holding her, not her saber, holding Anakin's saber, uh, training with it when she activates it. The sky, it's really bright outside, and so it makes the lightsaber almost look kind of white with like a hint of blue, which is cool because it's like color saturation and how it works on the lightsaber. That's really cool. CGI is great. The opening scene with Poe and Hux is, um, it, it, it's funny. Um, good, good CGI, him flying towards the ship, attacking, you know, the bombing fleet. Uh, animals in, in The Last Jedi look fantastic, too. The creatures in The Last Jedi, most of them are, again, um, puppets and animatronics, and then some are, some are CGI, like the, uh, those horse-like, whatever those were, those animals in The Last Jedi, those are cool. Uh, and about Hux and Poe leading me to my other point, comedy, I didn't think it was that bad. The, the comedy was okay, but they could have done without in some scenes, like Luke milking the sea cow. It is cool, again, to see how he survives, you know, living on his own. I mean, but <laughs> it could have just cut to, like, a shot behind the sea cow's back and you don't see him drinking it, just... It was just really awkward how it was shot, and it was kind of weird to look at on this huge cinema screen. Um, but the comedy is, in the beginning, there's a lot of it, and then it kind of dies down. It, it's really serious with Ray and uh, Luke, which is what I like. Uh, Yoda appears, and he uh, gives Luke a little tap on the head with his cane. That's kind of funny. Um, they have some funny jokes. The, now, the thing with um, Finn and Rose, I really... It was probably one of my least favorite parts of The Last Jedi, and you'd figure a huge bright casino with all these people playing the games and uh, slot machines and whatever, and, you know, uh, uh, Finn and Poe, Finn and Poe, Finn and Rose running around. You'd think it'd be pretty cool, and it is, but it's just something about the horse things and, and them running around just trying to find a code breaker is kind of funny and Benicio Del Toro um, however you pronounce his name the stuttering uh, hacker dude that we see he's kind of cool I do like his character he's kind of laid back kind of mysterious very mysterious actually uh, very in the shadows very 
secretive and you don't really learn a lot about him, which is cool. And I hope he appears again, but hopefully he can redeem himself. He His view is that there is no good or bad side. He's just kind of just learning as he goes and just not choosing sides. And he says to, uh, uh, to Finn, live free, don't join. And I think that's a very strong line because Finn's joining the fight to just stop the First Order. And, and he's proven a point. If you want to live free, just don't join, don't fight. Very cool character, very funny. Um, as always, BB-8 is cool with uh, Benicio Del Toro, his character, and BB-8 interact a lot, and that's nice to see. Um, Snoke, I'm not going to lie, he goes from The Force Awakens to being this big, bad, tall, mysterious hologram dude that you really fall in love with as the character, and then it's like, in The Last Jedi, he, you learn a lot more about him. I'm not saying it's necessarily bad, it's just... There's no gradual fade between the mysterious giant Snoke to the real life Snoke with a golden robe that has a accent that you never even heard in the original uh, Force Awakens, which is which is kind of cool. It just opens abruptly. Snoke's entrance is just abrupt. Uh, the doors open and Kylo walks in, and you hear him talk and how he actually talks and how tall he is. You know what he looks like, how freaking huge his hands are. They're ridiculous. Um, but Snoke was actually pretty cool, and I wanted to see more. A lot of people wanted to see more of Snoke in this movie. He died off very quick, um, and I thought his death was cool. It was just a bit too fast. I wanted to see more of Snoke develop, because Snoke is a really cool character. Any dark side um, characters like that, that are really mysterious, but yet so strong, that's really cool. Like Palpatine. Palpatine and Snoke are, I mean, obviously identical. They, uh, Snoke was copied basically by uh, from Palpatine so Snoke was cool the plot the plot it's hard to describe how the plot went the plot there was a definite plot but you know it didn't the story didn't move a whole lot if that makes sense like every there was the the, the whole the main plot was just trying to find a code breaker that's literally the plot because that and like you know stopping the first order the the plot of every Star Wars movie stopping the bad guy that's always a subplot but the main plot of this movie was finding a code breaker and really if you think about it it should have re resolved revolved around uh, Finn and Rose because they were the ones trying to find the code breaker um, and they did but a different one and then they ended up um, he ended up betraying Finn and Rose and took back his promises and whatever. But really, it doesn't really go anywhere. Like, it just cuts back to uh, Ray and Luke, and then it cuts back to Poe with Holdo on the uh, ship, on the Resistance ship. And that's really... And then, and then back to uh, Finn and Rose. And that's honestly really... it. That's really kind of the whole plot. It, when I say it doesn't move much, it just jumps either to Ray and Luke, to Finn and Rose at the casino... And then back to uh, back to Poe and Holdo, and it just you just basically the whole thing of um, Poe and Holdo and that crew, the Resistance on that ship, is they're literally just slowly flying away from a Resistant from a First Order ship that's bombarding them with laser cannons. That's really it for that. And then it just when you watch it, you get this feeling, some feeling inside. It's hard to describe. It's like you really don't it, the, the 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 it didn't really there was no really advancement in the movie like nothing huge really happened like besides Luke dying and Snoke dying and Ray's lightsaber ripping in half or Anakin's lightsaber ripping in half uh, the movie didn't really have a, much of a plot advancement it just really what the sum of it was Luke uh, lit the spark for the rebellion again and that yet again, it really didn't go anywhere. Like I said, if you think about it, it just did not go really real far at all because all that happened was Luke lit a fire for the Rebellion so they could have more hope. And that's really all the movie was about if you narrow it down. And it wasn't bad. If I have to give it a rating besides 10, I'm going to give it a 8.5 or a 9. It definitely is a good movie. Um, again, I can see why people didn't like it. You know, the Luke thing, the... Mary Sue thing, the, you know, the sea cow, but they're all opinions in the end. If you have your opinion, you're happy with it, go for it. I do not care what your opinion is. If you love the movie, I don't care. If you hated the movie, I don't care at all. It's, 
my opinion that I think matters to me because I'm my person and anyone else's opinion I do not care I mean unless like unless you tell me about it and you give me your thoughts and I'll start to you know like I'll be like oh that's interesting but I don't care what your opinion is you're allowed to have your own opinion I do not care um, and the last thing before I close this out is the Disney ruining the franchise is ridiculous. I hear that from a lot of people. Is like, oh, the, oh, the Disney. I, I read a lot of YouTube comments. Disney's ruining the franchise, and I mean, I if they are ruining the franchise, so be it. I mean, I've got better things to do to worry about a movie. I've got work and I've got school. You know, it just people are so hypersensitive about these things, and they get so angry. And I, I say, there's no reason to be so. It's a movie. It is visual and auditorial senses, and that's all you're getting. You're paying like seven, ten bucks to go see, to go look at something. You know, it's not the end of the world. If it was real life and this was part of history, yeah, I'd have something to be worried about if Luke was a real life person who was a hermit and affected our way of lives, but he wasn't. He's a made up character, and Mark Hamill's alive. You know, he's fine and well. He's not dead. Luke's fine. Mark Hamill's not a hermit in real life. You have nothing to worry about. I thought the movie was great. You can have your own opinion. I do not care at all um, what you think about the movie, but I liked it, and I can't wait to see Episode Nine. I also can't wait to see Solo, uh, Star Wars Story. If you guys haven't seen my ASMR Solo thing, go on my channel where you're watching it. Check out the video, the Solo plays Sabacc ASMR. That's something I did that was pretty fun. Uh, so I can't wait to see Solo. I can't wait to see the Kenobi movie that's coming out soon and, you know, all these other cool little neat things I think it's going to be cool all these movies that are coming up with and I can't wait to see what they do so I hope you enjoyed my really extensive long review of Star Wars The Last Jedi and I will see you guys in the next video